Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, go ahead, my brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, if you would, turn your books to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, <laughs> verses 13 and 14. And when you get there, my brother, go right ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yes, sir. Now, if we would, brothers and sisters, let us turn our books to Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. All right, my brother. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. What's up, brothers and sisters? The whole duty of man, keeping them commandments. Amen? Amen. And brothers and sisters, we're going to go ahead and get into the lesson. For those that's new, I am Brother D. Berry. The brother standing next to me is Brother Rashad. Hey, family, happy Sabbath to y'all that do know me. Happy Sabbath, brother. And brothers and sisters, we're going to go ahead and get into this lesson. I was looking at a speech that a civil rights leader said back in the day. I'm not going to mention any names. But he said, if you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book. You put it in a book. <laughs> when I found out why that was said, though, it really blew my mind. Because they say it, that we like to stay ignorant. We don't like to look into things. <clears throat> and as time has progressed, I hate to say, it's pretty true. It's pretty true. Yep. Nothing more evident, brothers and sisters, than the word of God in this Bible that's in everybody's lap right now. For years, I've seen this in house to house, place to place. And nobody know what's in there. Nobody reading it. We just use it as ornaments. Hmm. You show people stuff in the Bible today. That's in there? Hmm. Let alone be your own people. And brothers and sisters, when it comes to having a relationship with God, when it comes to knowing the word of God, when it comes to identifying yourself as a servant of God, it's all in here. And you don't know what God requires you to do 
unless you get in your book. And I'm saying your for a reason. Hmm. I'm making it personal. Until you get in your book and you read. For, for years, centuries, decades, the word of God has been taught by a man standing at a pulpit and telling you what's in there and you not going in there searching none of it out. Church to this day is defined by a single phrase that we hear every time, well, pastor said. The Hebrew Israelites say, well, brother said. And brothers and sisters, it is important for every last one of us to get into your Bible and you read your book. And that's the lesson that we're dealing on today, brothers and sisters. Worry about when you read. Because it is perks, it is beneficial for your salvation, for you to get in your book and you read. Don't be the servant that the only time you hear the word of God is when you sit in here, when you pop on a YouTube video, when you put a DVD on. Get in your book and read. For all those that have got jobs, got higher educations, even got a driver's license, you got that because you pulled a book out and you read it. Whether it was an employee manual, a driver's ed book, whatever, you opened up a book and you read it. You know why? To obtain knowledge. So we're going to get into this, because like I said, brothers and sisters, hey, it, I heard a civil rights leader say that, but then when I read this scripture right here and the Lord validated it, it blew my mind. Let's go to Hosea, the fourth chapter, brothers and sisters. And we're going to read one verse, Rashad, verse 6. I'm getting some feedback. Hosea 4, and we're going to read one verse, verse 6. And again, the title is, Whereby When You Read. We're going to Hosea 4, and we're going to read one verse, brothers and sisters, verse 6. All right, Hosea 4 and verse 6. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of, lack knowledge. of knowledge. We go to colleges. We go to schools. <laughs> We go, to, we go to trade schools, brothers and sisters. And God has said that his people are destroyed for simply not knowing. Lack of knowledge. Finish that, brother. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, uh -huh. I will also reject thee. How have we rejected knowledge? We back to read. We, we finna read how you reject knowledge, brothers and sisters. Keep going, brother. Can we finish that? No, sir. Go ahead. Mid six. I will also reject thee. Uh huh. And thou shalt be no priest to me. Uh huh. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Uh huh. You hear what the Lord said about us? He said he really was going to forget our children for simply being destroyed by the lack of knowledge, brothers and sisters, not knowing. So when I read that, and I heard what the brother said about if you want to keep something from black folks, you put it in a book. I said, wow. That really blew my mind. We hate reading, brothers and sisters. We hate searching things out. We hate looking into things. We like for people just to tell us what it is. And they say we are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. Where do knowledge come from? Let's go to Proverbs, the second chapter. Yes, sir. Because people might say, I disagree with that, Rashad. Mm. I got a bachelor's degree in such and such. <laughs> I got knowledge. Yeah. We're going to read one verse here. Proverbs 2, and we're going to read verse 6. Proverbs 2, and we're going to read verse 6. All right, my brother, keep feeding us. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh-huh. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Oh, out of whose mouth? The Lord's mouth. Out of the Lord's mouth come, comes knowledge and understanding. So when God tells you his people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge, that means his people are destroyed from hearing his word, brothers and sisters. Yes. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. 
We are destroyed. We are consumed. We are wasting away in the streets because we don't know the word of God. Let's keep going. Let's go to Matthew 15. Because everybody will say, well, I'm going to church. I done went to church every Sunday. Hmm. I don't even think it's a requirement in the Sunday church to come in with a Bible no more. Nope. Come as ye are. Hate to say it, brothers and sisters, but we've been stupid for far too long. We've been stupid for far too long. Matthew 15, and I want one verse read there too, my brother. Verse 9, because here is how the word of God is taught now. And the Lord was the one that put us on game about it. What does it read in that verse, my brother? But in vain they do worship that me. That means they worshiping God for nothing. People go to church every Sunday for nothing. Watching all these so-called evangelists on TV, day by day, on YouTube. All this to say you think you're getting close to God and you're wasting your time. And why do they worship them for nothing, brother? Keep reading. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Uh -huh. And you know that's validated. Because everybody say, don't nobody say what the Lord said. Hmm. Everybody say what pastor said. Right. And God just told you this. But if you ain't in this book, you would never know that. What you say. Right out the gate. And this is why it's so important, brothers and sisters, to get into this book and read this thing on your own. Let's go to Ephesians, the third chapter. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to read one verse here also, my brother. Just where the title came from. Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 4. If you want to know where the title came from, here you go, right here. Go ahead, my brother. What does it read? Whereby when ye read. Whereby when you listen. When ye read. When ye read, go ahead. Ye may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ. Uh -huh. You hear what the disciple, the apostle said right here? When you read, you're going to understand the mystery of Christ. Everything about the Lord will make sense to you when you open this book up, brothers and sisters. What you you know how I know that? Because my God says, seek and ye shall find, not might. Shall. Shall. Mm -hmm. So when you open this book for you, the Lord going to reveal itself to you. How do you think you got here? Hmm. You searched it for yourself. You started looking into things yourself. And all of a sudden, you sat down at IOG, didn't you? You're right. Because what you was reading was matching up with what you was hearing. But you took the first steps. Hey, when Philip came to the Ethiopian eunuch, he said something very key that everybody misses out. Understand what thou readest. But he took the first step. It wasn't Philip got in the chariot and started teaching them. He had to start reading first, brothers and sisters. Right. So what we think we got to do something any different? When you read, everything going to start clicking. It's a lot don't make sense to us in the book. Well, why we can't wear fringes no more? Well, why you can't do this? Why you can't do that? And it will never make sense to you until you get in the book and you read it. What you say? Let's keep going. Let's go to St. John, the first chapter. We didn't study for everything else, brothers and sisters, but salvation. <laughs> right. You think them, you can cheat your way into salvation? <laughs> no. You think somebody can copy your notes into everlasting life? <laughs> you think another man's knowledge is going to get you in there? <laughs> you got to know every last one of us. St. John 1, brothers and sisters. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1 because it said when you get in here and read, you're going to understand the mystery of Christ, right? Yes. Here's something that is looked over the world that's right here in the book. A lot of us is familiar with this, but everybody looks this over. This is a mystery to the world we're about to read. St. John 1 and 1. What does it read, my brother? In the beginning was the Word, 
And the word was with God. And the word was God. Uh-huh. If you read Revelation, the 19th chapter, you can find out who this word is. Yes. But that is no other than Jesus, brothers and sisters. And right here, you didn't already found out how many in the Godhead, too. Right. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's two. Yep. Keep reading, brother. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh-huh. Go ahead. All things were made by him. Oh, so so much for saying God is a woman. Oh, man. Mm -mm. See, you, all this is out in the world now because ain't nobody reading. Right. It said all things were made by him. Go ahead. And without him was not anything made that was made. And all things exist because of Jesus, brothers and sisters. Facts. Go ahead, my brother. In him was life. Uh -huh. And the light was the light of men. Uh-huh. The Lord said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. Everything that gets you to salvation is going to redirect you to the word of God, brothers and sisters. Not no crosses on your neck. Not no ornaments. Mm -mm. Not just saying I'm blessed and highly favored. No, no. You got to have the word of the God housed in you if you're trying to seek everlasting life. Go ahead, my brother. Skip down for me and read verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. What? That yeah. just tied Jesus to the Old and the New Testament. Yep. Why is the Bible taught now that there is an Old Testament God and a New Testament God? Same God. Jesus don't even come into the picture until Matthew. That don't make him Alpha and Omega. That's middle and Alpha. <laughs> That's off. But now when you read, it makes sense now. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. I only know one God that, was, that made the world and was in the world. Mm -hmm. It starts to click now. Mm -hmm. Keep reading, brother. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And they still don't. What you, say? you can see how, I don't care how many times they say Jesus Christ. You can validate the world don't know the Lord, brothers and sisters. Start showing them the law. Oh, that's nailed to the cross. Start pointing out the dietary law. Start pointing out the feast days. Well, wait a minute. Hmm. That ain't Jesus. We got Christmas and Easter. Something you can't read. Go ahead, brother. 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Still to this day. Still to his day, brothers and sisters. What you say? The Lord is going to testify some things we're going to read today out of his own mouth and prove, hey, we didn't care nothing about his word then and now. I say it all the time. The only thing the Lord left you was his word. Ain't nothing right. else. Right. No artifacts, no relics, none of that. Word or nothing for you. Mm -hmm. This book. Mm -hmm. And look how it's taken for granted. I never went into a driver's ed school and walked in and said, well, pastor said you could run the red light. <laughs> well, pastor said I could run people over. Pastor said I had to stop at the stop sign. You're going to fail. Yep. You got a whole book right here, and we'll just say, just tell me what's in there. Hmm. We can't be them people no more, brothers and sisters. Did we finish that, brother? Go ahead. Twelve. But as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Uh-huh. Even to them that believe on his name. And it said as many as received him. This ain't a cliche, brothers and sisters, because everybody say, you know, I didn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. The Lord is my personal savior. <laughs> personal. I didn't receive God in my heart. You ain't did that unless you did it by the word. Right. Hold your marker here, and here's why I say that. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Because if we're going by sound bites alone, we're going to miss out a whole lot, brothers and sisters. That is right. A whole lot. People saying they receive the Lord. There's only one way you can receive the Lord, brothers and sisters. But if you ain't in the book, you won't even know this. We'll make up a fairy tale. I made the Lord some milk and cookies. I'm special <laughs> to him. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians, brothers and sisters, chapter 2, one verse, verse 13. What does it read, my brother? 
For this cause also thank we God uh -huh. without ceasing. Go ahead. Because when you receive the word of God. Which when we you, see what? The word. That's what I thought. Go ahead. Of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God. Yes, sir. Which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, the biblical definition of faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. You don't receive God unless you receive his words. Better. I don't care what you say. God established this. Yes. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You can make up another type of love if you want to, but it ain't validated by God. Mm -hmm. Look what he is saying right here. Hey, we thank God without ceasing. When we read this, it was like, praise the Lord. A light bulb clicked off. Right. We all got our books open. We all reading the same scriptures. I'm not just up here talking and y'all listening and trusting me. Man can lie to us. Mm -hmm. All man can lie. The yeah. book validates that. Right. And when you're dealing with a liar, don't you ask for proof? Yes. Well, show it show to it me. To me. Mm -hmm. Let me see what you're talking about. I need the evidence. Mm -hmm. Where's the documents? Right. They right here. And we read the word of God and we take it just for what it is, brothers and sisters. The word of God. That's when you receive Christ. No other way. Let's go back to that St. John, brothers and sisters. Let's go right back to St. John. We're going to pick it up at verse 14 now. Because all this, brothers and sisters, the world has looked this all over. It's overlooked. Go ask somebody, did you know Jesus flooded the whole earth? Jesus didn't flood no earth. Hmm. Did you know Jesus parted the Red Sea? No, he did not. Contrary. <laughs> and this simple stuff we're talking about, brothers and sisters, but to the world it ain't because they ain't read. Right. Hey, it's bakers in the class. You don't need a cookbook to make a cake. We do. Because we don't know nothing. But when you have the knowledge, hey, you know what you're doing. It's no different with the word of God, brothers and sisters. You don't know what you're doing unless you done read and studied it. You think you're serving God, you better check again. Because nothing's going to validate if we is or we ain't, according to this word. St. John 1 and 14 now, my brother. And what does it read? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Process of elimination. We already know who it is now. Yep. But again, the world don't even know this. Go ahead. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Uh-huh. Now we know that he was the Son, and we know there's a Father also. Yes. You see what one chapter has already broke down for us? Yes. You see how one chapter has brought the Old and the New Testament together? And we read this. I remember I showed this to a pastor one time. He said, you're going to have to show me that Jesus Christ was in the Old Testament. Lock the door up on me. Wouldn't let me. And, I, and we ran it down, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry, give me a minute. I can't stand this line right here. <laughs> All right. We good. Give me right. Be your brother's keeper, Rashad. All right. All right. We good. Yep. We good. Okay. Pick that back up, brother. 14. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Uh huh. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh huh. Now read what, what John is going to say in the next verse. Go ahead. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. Uh huh. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. You hear what John said? Yeah. You hear what John knew? Yes. He said, he that cometh after me was preferred before me. For he was before For me. he was before me. That means he was mentioned before I was even here. Yes. But you got to read to know that. Teach, bro. You got to read to understand that. It's obvious man ain't telling us this <laughs> because man don't tie Jesus into the Old Testament unless you're going somewhere where the truth being told. I'm going to hold it. 
<laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going, brothers. So let's go to Romans 16. We're going to Romans 16. We're going to pick it up at verse 25. That's fine. Hold just get in there. <laughs> Romans 16. We're going to pick it up at verse 25, brothers and sisters. Hey, that St. John 1, use that scripture, brothers and sisters. It's a, it's a lot of light in that that the world don't even know. And that's a very common scripture for us, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Check, check, test it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Much, much better. Get yeah. loose now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Romans 16, brothers and sisters, we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Romans 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. And when you get there, my brother, keep feeding us. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Uh-huh, and there's only one him that has the power to establish you, brothers and sisters. Yes. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. And the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Uh-huh. Understand how blessed we are. The things that we know, a lot of this was kept secret before this was around, brothers and sisters. Yeah. We truly have access to everlasting life. You know man searching high and low, looking for fountains of youth, mm -hmm. everything to maintain life. And we actually know the mystery of that. We truly do. Right. Keep reading, brother. 26. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures. Whoa, of the made manifest by what? By the scriptures. By the scriptures. That's Genesis to Malachi, brothers and sisters. Yes, of the prophets. Uh-huh. You mean the mysteries of Christ were made manifest in the scriptures? Yes. You mean that same old book they told us we don't need no more? We need it. See the dangers of not reading? Yes. I've heard pastors for years tell us that you don't need the Old Testament when the New Testament validates the Old Testament. Mm. But I never knew that until I got in there myself and read it. Mm. I had even turned it one time, it's a black God in the Old Testament and you got white Jesus in the New Testament. Mm. And that didn't even make sense until you get in here and you read what it is. That's right. One. One. Go ahead, brother. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God. The scriptures and the commandments. Yes. Why are we reading this in the New Testament? Go ahead. Made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Oh, so this just ain't for Israel either. Everybody. Everybody. How can I serve God? How can I be a servant of God? You got to get in the scriptures. That's right. I don't care what color you are. Yes. Go ahead. To God only one. Yes, sir. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Uh-huh. I love that verse. Yes. To God only, only wise. wise. That eliminates everybody else. Amen. And if you thought like that, you will only depend on God. Yes, mm -hmm. Even when pastor said, pastor will have to show you what God said, because God's the only one that's wise. Teach, brother. How can you be a man of God and your information ain't coming from your source? Mm. You ain't a man of God. Check them, brothers and sisters. Walk <laughs> around with them with a Bible. Hey, pastor, do you believe this? Mm. He going to tell you, yeah. Then start breaking stuff down to him in the book. Well, how come you ain't standing on what God got written, brother? Mm. God the only one wise. Mm. I don't want to serve a stupid God. Who do? Ooh. What you said. You mean your creation is more intelligent than you? But we don't have that, brothers and sisters. Man then taught us contrary to that oh well what he meant brother was when he said that he meant this no God said exactly what he said and what he meant said. it exactly the way he said it <laughs> when he said all souls is mine all, all souls, souls is, is mine, mine. <laughs> absolute when he said the wages of sin is death bank on it 
But man will say, that ain't what he meant. <laughs> when he had it written, <laughs> brothers and sisters, I say it all the time, nobody has made God more minute than his creation. What you say? We made him this small, brothers and sisters. We made him stupid. We made him not knowing nothing. And we got to interpret everything for him. Earthly. And the people like they love to have it so. I love a God that can change his mind. When my God all through the book said, I change not so you won't be consumed. What you say? If I was all over the place, wouldn't none of y'all be here? <laughs> Let's keep going, my brother. We finished that? Yes, sir. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go to St. John, the fifth chapter. It's saying in the Old Testament that the mysteries of Christ was in the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Yes. Who better to validate this than the Lord himself? St. John 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 37. St. John 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 37. All right, my brother, go right ahead. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Uh-huh. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time. Nor seen his shape. Uh-huh. This is Jesus saying this. This is the son. So this eliminates the father being the God of the Old Testament. Because mm. I've heard it taught like this. Mm -hmm. It was Jesus the whole time, brothers yes, and sisters. That is right. This is a mystery that's overlooked because people ain't read. Go ahead. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Hey, the Lord said you don't even have his word in you because you don't believe me. How can you believe the Father when I'm sent from the Father? I have his words housed in me. Mm. Boy, this really lays a measuring stick, don't it? Yes. Go ahead, brother. 39. Search the scriptures. Oh, who just told us this? The Lord told us. Jesus me. Christ told us to search the scriptures? Yes. Do you know how you search scriptures? You read them. <laughs> Go ahead. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Do you know what a testimony is? It's yes. evidence. Yes. God said, if you get in the Old Testament, you will find evidence of me. Evidence. Teach, bro. But they told us to stay away from that book. Mm. They kept you away from the proof of who God is. That's right. Yes, He's the one that drowned the earth. Yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes, he's the one that parted the Red Sea. Yes, he's the one that had Israel having quails come out their nose because they wanted something to eat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> but when you don't know, we'll go by what man then told us. What you say. Go ahead, brother. 40. And ye will not come to me. Ooh, go ahead. That ye might have life. How else can you come to him but by his word? See, this is, that's why the God say his people destroyed by a lack of knowledge. The only relationship you got with God is getting in his word, brothers and sisters. Teach. And he said, you won't even do that. This book will teach you everlasting life. You better open it for yourself. This ain't one of these type of life lessons, brothers and sisters, where, hey, somebody just got to tell you what to do. Mm. You got to get in there and you got to search it. You got to read. Your life on the line. Every last one of us as an individual. We can't hold hands and walk into the kingdom and say, praise the Lord for Brother Bowie getting in his book. <laughs> he made a way for us. You still got to get in there. Work out your own salvation. That's what it say, don't it? Mm -hmm. We're fear and trembling. Where we at, bro? We finished that? Skip to 46. Skip to 46 and what does it read? For had ye believed Moses... Ye would have believed me. Why? For he wrote of me. Jesus Christ said this. Yes. That's overlooked, brothers and sisters. Teach. Nobody tied Jesus Christ and Moses together, but they should. Teach. All Moses was was a publisher. What you said. Do you know what a publisher do? Write what the author tell him to write. Teach. That's all he was, brothers and sisters. So Jesus was still the one giving Moses what to say, what yes. to write down. And you won't even know that unless we get in here and read it, brothers and sisters. Yes. We don't know nothing about the feast days of the Lord. 
the feast days of Jesus, rather, right. just so it could tie in to you. We don't understand about the laws, why we read the laws, and none of that. We can't say we know God unless we know the scriptures, brothers and sisters. And unless you read, you can't say that. Study to show yourself approved. Where we at, bruh? 47. Go ahead. But if ye believe not his writings. So if you ain't believe what Moses said, if you saying that's done away, if you saying we don't need that, mm. finish it. How shall ye believe my words? How you gonna believe anything Jesus got to say? Lay it out, bro. See, the truth of the matter, brothers and sisters, if he's really the Alpha and Omega, because it's always quoted that he's the Alpha right. and Omega, even though it's written to, I hear so many pastors say that, but they don't start them at the beginning. Mm. Mm. He started in the middle. He's removed out of places. They don't even want to talk about Jesus when you get to Revelation. They don't even read that book. <laughs> right. All this kept away from us, brothers and sisters, and this Bible been around for too long. Hey, a lot of us got to age when we found the truth. And to this day, we still like, wow, that's in there? Wow, that's in there? Didn't know that was in there. It's a lot you don't know when you don't read. And that's the truth of it. Yeah. It's a lot you don't know when you don't read. Yeah. Let's keep going, brothers and sisters. Let's keep going. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. Because people might say, well, that was before he died, Brother D. Barry. That was all nailed to the cross. Jesus didn't care nothing about you getting in the book after he died. Mm. All you had to do was accept him in your heart. <laughs> Desperately wicked. Yes, sir. Luke 24, we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Luke 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21, brothers and sisters. This is after his resurrection right here we read. Two of his disciples was walking, pondering in their hearts what was going on, feeling sad. One just happened to be named Cleophas. Luke 24, we're going to pick it up at verse 21. The Lord appeared to him, asked him what was going on. Verse 21, what does it read, my brother? But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Uh-huh, go ahead. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. Uh-huh. And when they found not his body, they came saying. They came saying, you know everything they are repeating back to the Lord is sound bites. They're not going by what was written. Mm. They're not even going by what the Lord taught them. They're going by sound bites. That's how Jesus is taught now. Mm. Sound bite. Well, you know, the Lord says such and such. Well, where is it? I don't know where it at, but I know it's in there. Mm. Sound bites. Sound bites. Go ahead. Mid-23. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Uh-huh. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the woman had said. But him they saw not. So they breaking this whole thing down to the Lord like it's a mystery to them. Like they confused. They don't know what's going on. And watch how the Lord is going to break on his own disciples. What did he say to them, brother? Then he said unto them, O oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. What? Yeah. He could have said, why you didn't remember what I said to you? Mm. But that's the beauty of our God. He promised us something. You have a more sure word of prophecy. Yes. A more sure word. So he broke his own disciples down after his death and told them why you don't believe what's written in the scriptures. This was after, this was during his resurrection, brothers and sisters. And he said this to them. What else did he do, brother? Keep reading. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Uh-huh. Go ahead. And beginning at Moses. And beginning at Moses. He started at the beginning then, brothers and sisters, because Moses wrote the first five books. Right. Jesus could have just talked to them, but he ran the book down to them. Now, keep in mind, this was after his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So if it was nailed to the cross, why did the Lord go back and use it? It's still good. It ain't making sense now. Mm. But see, if you never got in the book, man will tell you that, and we just rolled with it, didn't we? Okay, well, that makes sense, Pastor. I guess it's nailed to the cross. Mm. 
But when you done read with him, why did the Lord use it? Teach, bro. He got to get back with you then. Yeah. I'll get back with you. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. All the prophets. He ran the scriptures down. Doing what, brother? He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. Some of the scriptures. All the scriptures. Go ahead. The things concerning himself. Jesus ran his whole life down in the Old Testament. Like I said, he could have just talked this, brothers and sisters, right. but he didn't. He ran it down to the book. That's an example for us. Teach. The Lord did things so that, hey, when we get enlightened to the word of God, we know what to do. Even after he was a hungered and he fasted, he did nothing but quote scripture back to Satan. What you use to fight him off? Mm. Let's keep going, brother. We finished that? Mm. Let's keep going. Let's go to Matthew, the 12th chapter. They used to tell us back in elementary school that reading was fundamental. Right. This show sure enough is. I don't know about Dr. Seuss. <laughs> but we all know that because we read it. Mm -hmm. No, no, Sam, I am. I will not eat <laughs> green eggs and ham. You know how you know that? Because you read it. Nice. <laughs> Shouldn't eat it anyway. <laughs> Old McDonald had a dog, and Bingo was, was his, his name. name. <laughs> you know how you know it? You read it. <laughs> Simple stuff, but you read it. Matthew's 12, brothers and sisters, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Look at something else the Lord did right here. Matthew's 12 and verse 1, what does it read? At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. And his disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Go ahead. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. So the Pharisees tried to check the Lord and his disciples. Mm -hmm. You're breaking the Sabbath. Check how he deal with them, though, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. But he said unto them, have ye not read? Have you not what? Read. He, what you read? No. Go ahead. What David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? Uh-huh. How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but for only, but only for the priests. Look at the tactics Jesus used for dealing with the Pharisees, brothers and sisters. Mm. He asked them something. Have you not read what David did? Again, he could have just said these things to him, but he's bringing them back to what's written in the book. Hold on, you didn't read that? You didn't read this? What else he say, brother? Keep going. Five. Or have you not read in the law? Oh, have you not read in the law? The law. Go ahead. How that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Verse 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Uh-huh. And look at his method for dealing with the scribes and the Pharisees, brothers and sisters. Have you not read this? Did you not read that? Right. There's many instances in the book, brothers and sisters, where this is what the Lord used when he was dealing with those that were supposed to know something. Have you not read? Have you not read? Mm. Why does he keep bringing up reading? Why is that so important? Very important, brothers and sisters. Very important. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. And the Lord keep bringing up stuff that's written in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 17. Second Peter 1 and verse 17. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. Yes, sir. That is, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Uh-huh. This is when the Father's voice came down from heaven and said this to Jesus, brothers and sisters. But keep going. 
And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Hey, and Simon Peter is saying, hey, we heard this same voice. We heard this validated. They are talking about hearing the words of God, validating who Jesus is. This is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. But that wasn't even enough. Check out what the brother's about to say in the next verse. What does it read, though, brother? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. You mean to tell me the word of God, this prophecy, was even more sure than hearing the Father's voice from heaven? Book. He said we have an even more sure word of prophecy. So even if we doubt that, this was written. What you said. Go ahead. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. You do well if you do what? Take heed. How do you take heed to words? You listen. You read them. You apply them to this. Go ahead. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Yes, sir. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Uh-huh. How many times y'all been reading, brothers and sisters, and you be like, oh, there it is right there. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. I was just wondering that. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. That was on my mind all day. Yes. Come on, bro. But you got to get in there for that. got to get in. You could be dealing with something personal. You'd be like, wait a minute. He went through that too? Praise the Lord. Peace, bro. Mm. But you won't know if you ain't read. Newsflash, brother and sister. This is your whole life manual right here. Yes. And the Lord wisdom is infinite. We taught that last night, brothers and sisters. He know everything about you. He know everything you need, and he got everything that's for you right here in this book. Open it up and find out. Open it up and find out. Where we at, brother? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. Even from hearing the Father's voice, they say we got a more sure word of prophecy. Boy, that really raises the value of the Bible, don't it? Mm. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 10, brothers and sisters, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Very familiar script, but to the world it's a mystery because they ain't reading. First Corinthians 10 and verse 1, what does it read, my brother? Moreover, brethren... I would not that you should be ignorant. Ignorant just means not knowing, don't it? Right. Go ahead. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Uh-huh. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And who was it? That rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. It said they had the same spiritual meat, the same spiritual drink. Even when the Lord came in the flesh, this threw him off. Right. He said, take this flesh. Take, take this blood. They was confused. What is he talking about? Eat them. <laughs> <laughs> you see what not reading will happen? You don't know what's going on. His own disciples didn't know what was going on because they didn't know what was in this book. Right. Hey, but this disciple did. He said, hey, they were all followed that rock, and that rock was Christ. He identified exactly who it was, the Son. Our forefathers followed Christ, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ. In the Hebrew community, they hate, they cringe when you say that. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ went in the Old Testament. That's, he all threw it. Wasn't no J. Wasn't no nothing. <laughs> who, who wants to serve a God that ain't smart enough to know languages? <laughs> Come on. That's they stupid God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's they stupid God. Let's keep going, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Exodus 24. <laughs> my God told me what a stammering lip and another tongue am I going to yes. speak to you. Yes. Exodus 24, brothers and sisters. Let's, let's find out what our forefathers did. Since they followed that rock and that rock was Christ, let's see what Christ did for his people, brothers and sisters. Mm. Our forefathers. Exodus 24, we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Exodus 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. All right, my brother, keep feeding us. 
And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord uh -huh. and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord have said will we do. Uh -huh. This is when Moses told the people what the Lord had said to them. Go ahead. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't we read earlier that Jesus said that Moses wrote of me? Yes. Didn't we read earlier where he said, how can you believe me if you don't believe his words? Right. Because the two are hand in hand. So when we read this Exodus now, we're like, oh, that's Jesus. Go ahead. Right. All the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning. Excuse me. Pick that back up. Yeah. Verse Go ahead. Four. Verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh-huh. And Skip he said, down, my brother, and read verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant. He took the book of the covenant. And what did he do with the book? Read in the audience of the people. Oh, he read in the audience of the people. What you think we doing, brothers and sisters? Same thing. Go ahead. You thought this was just an IOG thing? <laughs> this is what the servants of God is supposed to do. We're going to validate it. Keep reading. And they said, all that the Lord have said will we do and be obedient. Uh-huh. And then Moses took the same book. Not only did he tell them the words, he wrote it and read it to them. You don't think reading this book is important? Let's keep finding out, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 31 now. Somebody asked me, well, why we read the law now when we open up? Let me read it to you. <laughs> Let me read it to you. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 31, we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 31, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Something I said in Raleigh when I taught this lesson, brothers and sisters, that, that man overlooks. I've always asked, well, what if this is wrong? Hmm. <laughs> what, if, what if serving the Lord? What if y'all keeping them commandments for nothing? I said, well, if that's the case, I can stand before them and say, hey, I did what you had written. Hmm. <laughs> What you say here. <laughs> I would rather I would rather hedge the bet that way than hedge the bet the opposite way. Oh Lord, I ain't know you was for real. It's too late now. Right. <laughs> right. I didn't know I had to keep that. I would rather keep it now. One thing I do know, I would still, if, if, if none of the law was on the table for being a right person, for not stealing, for not committing adultery, for not bearing false witness, for keeping the Sabbath holy, I would still get in there. <laughs> mm. I do know that. <laughs> mm. But Deuteronomy 31, brothers and sisters, and pick it up at verse 11. What does it read, my brother? When all Israel has come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the place where who shall choose? The Lord shall Look choose. Look at this building, brothers and sisters. Do you think it's here for a reason? The Lord chose it. The Lord chose it. Does it not bear his name? Is it not the Israel of God? Yes. I thought it was. Go ahead. Thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Oh, so that's why we do it. You thought it was just a buoy thing, didn't you? Mm. It's a Jesus Christ thing, brothers and sisters. Right. That's what it is. Right. Go ahead. Twelve. Gather the people together, men and women uh -huh. and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gate. So gather everybody together. Amen. Israel, the strangers, everybody. And do what, brother? That they may hear. Uh, that they may do what? Hear. Go ahead. And that they may learn. Yes, sir. And fear the Lord your God. And observe to do all the words of this law. Uh-huh. See, the Lord had, Jesus had this set up, brothers and sisters. None of this is by coincidence. None of this is the ways of man. We are following what does say the Lord. This is the definition of church. Peace, brother. Not just coming up here, hearing somebody hollering and shouting, hearing some good music and going home. We hear the word of God. We all got our books open and we all validating what does say the Lord. Not what does said man. Peace, brother. This how it's supposed to be. We finished that, brother? 13. And that their children, which have not known anything, yes, sir. may hear, 
and learn to fear the Lord your God. You're supposed to teach this to the kids. We got them upstairs. What do you think they're doing upstairs? Just playing? they learning the word. Right. This is a form of higher education. Yes. This is it, brothers and sisters. It ain't Harvard. It ain't Stanford. It's Jesus Christ. Mm. And if you don't know that, you still ain't smart. You still know nothing because he said out of his words comes knowledge and understanding. Yes. So you can rip your degree up. But Brother D. Ray, you shouldn't talk about the college education. I'm not going to discredit the knowledge of God. That's above everything, brothers and sisters. What you said. It's going to address the elephant in the room. Yes. People get afraid of that. We read last night, Solomon didn't go to no schools or nothing. And God had gave him knowledge that he said, ain't nobody going to be smarter before or after you. Mm. He didn't go to no college. He didn't get no degree. Mm. He didn't have no scholars. Scholars teaching him nothing. God taught him. And ain't nobody smarter than him to this day. Right. A man that never went to school. Right. <laughs> right. You mean to tell me this can't make you a genius? <laughs> Daniel them taught the Gentiles mathematics and science. Yep. Because they knew this. <laughs> this is the highest form of education out there, brothers and sisters. And if you ain't reading this, you don't know nothing. What you don't care what you say. What you, you don't say. know nothing. Prove it wrong. <laughs> Where we at, brother? Mid 13. Go ahead. May hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. Yes, sir. As long as ye live in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess That's the it. most important thing we can teach our kids, brothers and sisters, is to learn to fear God. Yes. We see a world where they don't. Right. They fighting police now. They shooting each other at barbecues, whatever. I'm just talking about Memphis stuff. I ain't got out of this county. They off the chain, as we say, mm -hmm. because there ain't no fear in them. Right. Y'all see them, we scared of them. Go to them young folks, brother, go that way. <laughs> That's what we call them, young folks, what they used to call us. Mm -hmm. Go to them young folks, brother, go that way. <laughs> Thundercats. <laughs> Let's keep going, brothers. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Not Thundercats. <laughs> but it's important, brothers and sisters, to teach our kids this. Some of us got little kids that want bedtime stories read at night. Grab the book. <laughs> we ain't reading Jack and the Beanstalk tonight. Right. That ain't true. <laughs> we gonna read this. Teach them to fear God. You wanna hear a scary story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how the Lord has some she bears come out and tear y'all a little bit. Yeah. Read that to them. Yeah. <laughs> Read him the young story, the young David, and how he, he killed a giant with a rock. <laughs> we read everything but that. Read it, brothers and sisters. Luke, the fourth chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Luke 4 and verse 14. This is after the Lord had fasted. Matter of fact, brother, mm -hmm. bag that up. Bag that up. Let's pick it up at verse 2. Bag it up. Luke 4, let's pick it up at verse 2. What does it read? Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Uh-huh, go ahead. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Uh-huh, if you're the Son of God and you want to eat, turn that rock into a piece of bread. Look how the Lord is going to deal with him. Go ahead, brother. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written. It is written. Go ahead. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Uh-huh. Keep in mind, the Lord did this for us, brothers and sisters. Yes. This is an example he left for us. He is dealing with Satan, bringing the scriptures back in his face. It is written, man don't live by bread alone, but every word proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. He reminded us of what we need to be eating, his word. Keep going, brother. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Uh-huh. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Uh-huh. Go ahead. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Uh-huh. And how did he deal with him on that one? 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. It is what? Written. Go ahead. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Again, he quoted book on them, brothers and sisters. And this is when he is dealing with Satan now. So learn how we got to deal with them. 